before I start, uh, if anyone here tonight has chronic illnesses or loves someone, cares for someone that does, please feel free to find me since we're not doing the bar afterwards. Uh, find me and, and uh, touch base real quick or send us an email. Contact information will be there. So thank you. I'm ready. So at the, the age of 11, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and I thought that that would hit my medical quota. I thought I'd be good. Uh, my body had other ideas, and for some reason, it continues to attack vital organs, and not really the one, the, the, the throwaway ones, the ones you want on board. Last year, my colon was completely removed. I now wear an insulin pump, a continuous glucose monitor, a, if I can find it, stoma bag, a heart monitor, and that makes me about 50% bionic. It's not exact science, but I think pretty, pretty darn close. So as part of my journey, I've had a lot of fun doctors, a lot of ones I'd like to make faces at. Uh, once a doctor said, my cat has diabetes, I understand how you feel. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't quite get that. After my surgery last year, a doctor said, at least you're not dead. Again, motivational. This is one of several binders um, with medical claims. It's really difficult to have one chronic illness, let alone several, uh, including one that some of the leading experts in the country and, and world don't know how to explain. Insurance doesn't love that. This is an example of a month for me. Uh, here's some several boxes of medical goods. Uh, I think we keep UPS just constantly going. Uh, but about 400 units of insulin, 30 ostomy sets, it's not cheap even with insurance. So a lot of my finances for, for myself go to keeping me alive. This is my lovely wife and the woman I love dearly. I've known her my whole life. I fell madly in love with her at 19. Uh, and one night in college after probably a few diet sodas, my, my kids aren't here tonight, so after several beers, I told her, I'm going to marry you and move to the Rocky Mountains. This is us with two healthy kids living in Maryland, which is close enough to the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> the outdoors and family are, are key to, to our success, really, as, as a family. And I was out riding my bike after uh, our third pregnancy loss in a, in a row uh, at 22 weeks. And as I was riding, a pine tree seemed to stop me. Uh, I sat under the pine tree and and cried for what felt like a couple days, it was probably a few minutes. And I had this experience of sort of my first lesson of mindfulness, I guess is how you want to call it. And the tree became very important to us overall. This sort of mental health journey, I love hockey, I love the, the game overall, and I knew one day I needed a little bit of help because hockey wasn't bringing me the joy uh, that it always did. Uh, so I sought mental health and continue to this day on a regular basis. It's key to my treatment. Perspective is everything. So after our losses, we decided to sell everything we owned and move to a tiny cow town, Bozeman, Montana. No projected growth. Um, we were lucky we, we beat the, the pandemic, so we were fortunate to get in when we did. And we feel very, very lucky to be here overall. After getting here, Bozeman is a literal breath of fresh air. We hiked, we skied, we bought a camper. Uh, I started fly fishing, which I guess is a, a thing now on the internet. People making fun of Bozeman folks for fly fishing, but I'm one of them, so um, I'm okay with that. Uh, it, it was just, it's a fantastic environment and we love it here. My health kind of improved overall. Um, diabetes, everything going on, things were okay. Um, I didn't feel great mentally or physically, but good enough as we welcomed our third and very last kid, Alexander, and the wonder dog, Christmas dog, Clark. After Alex was born, my health actually deteriorated quite a bit. There were hospital visits, ambulance rides, and no one could tell me what was going on, and we ended up at Mayo Clinic, uh, the leading experts in the world on GI issues. They couldn't tell me what to do other than your colon is diseased and we need to remove it. Tara and I treated my colon removal as a, a vacation. It was my 40th birthday, so we went for runs along the river, went to Rochester Honker Games. So go Honkers, if you're ever in Rochester, go check out a baseball game. 
very, very entertaining. And <laughs> after, after the surgery, um, or as, as, as the surgery recovery went on, again, the outdoors became very critical. So I slowly, um, slowly started to get back outside and have a semblance of life that I had before. Having your colon removed is serious. Um, if you have one, thank it, uh, and try to keep it as long as you can. You, you don't want that dead end or no outlet. It's, uh, it, it's, it's rough. Um, but as I said, my recovery continued to the point where after four weeks, I was mountain biking, I was running, my version of running, which is kind of walking, but it's my, my attempt. Um, but I had a bag, and it was always a challenge to try to adjust to life with a bag, plus diabetes, plus my heart stuff, and everything else going on. Mindfulness, meditation, writing, mental health played a role, but so did art. So on a whim, I became an art model, uh, which may surprise some of the hockey parents here tonight. Um, but uh, I have found great comfort in the art community and support through modeling. On a run one day, something my counselor said sparked me, and I came home and said to Tara, we need to start a nonprofit right now. And she asked some very constructive questions as I went to the computer and registered Evergreen Adventures, where uh, six months later we had a 501c3 designation. The outdoors is powerful. Uh, the outdoors is my sanctuary, my family's sanctuary, and I am grateful to be here and grateful for what I've learned in the outdoors, grateful to call Bozeman home, and appreciate everyone being here tonight. Thank you.